Hello Converge Collectors. So uh, on my subscriptions if you want to look it's some, there's something called Gundam Info and right now they have the entire Gundam Seed uh, show. It's, it's like 40 episodes or 46 episodes so it's a big commitment. But these three robots are from Gundam Seed. Uh, I do have to say that Gundam Seed was, it's a straight drama, there's almost no, there's no comedy value in that, it's just a serious cartoon and everyone in the end dies, almost. It's just kind of depressing actually, I didn't like it. But it had a lot of robots. So we have Converge Numbers 237, Dual Gundam, Aegis 249, and 262 is Buster Gundam. So these things, we'll start with here, number 237. So chassis GAT-X102, this came out in 2020, is from Wave Pound 20. And then here are the other robots from that particular wave. Okay, and then uh, here's some basic stats. So I'll well, get this open. Yeah, so all these are from Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. Sorry about the focus. And there's not too much to say about this one, it seems. Uh, First unit developed by some group. Uh, new face shift armor. And I guess this one's just called Dual Gundam because it has very often two dual wielded uh, beam sabers, which uh, seem to be in this Converge kit. So let's get this thing going. Alright, so I'm going to close this out. Here's some images. It did ultimately, towards the last few episodes, get taken out, and uh, possibly the character died. I don't know. This this particular robot has been featured in other animations, it seems as well, but I haven't seen those animations. All right, gum from 2020. I'm not going to chew on that. This one's already starting to brown a bit. Alright, so we have a off-white, uh, I guess it is supposed to be white, it's uh, my, my photo booth, maybe it's reflecting the, the gray of this, uh, this placemat. Alright, so we have a peg here for the stand, and nice foot details here, some thrusters it looks like. There's like a gunmetal gun metal color going around the knees here. Uh, not too much detail on the side there. Uh, maybe some thrusters or something. I'm not sure what those would be. The legs don't move on these converged figures in almost all instances. Uh, the beam sabers are actually just part of this hand. Uh, this hand can come off and rotate, but they're just there, in there. Uh, the back of the head is kind of plain. I wish they wrote the chassis numbers on these later converges, but they seem to stop doing that after the first 20 waves. So the, the eyes are nice on this, translucent green, and you can see some molded details back there in silver. Here's some metallic green paint, some blue and blue, uh, some cannons up in the head. No paint back there though. And so we have a hex and a round peg, so you can get a little bit of a, you know, left-right articulation, which is nice. I don't know what these little shields are, or maybe the thrusters on the shoulders, but... So the only ar other articulation is really just the shoulders. All right, well, pretty simple. Well, actually, I missed this already. There's a little orange up in here for these uh, intakes. So there's a pretty basic backpack, it looks like. It's that same blue, Whoop. And it looks like, I don't know, maybe, oh, it's got two more beam saber handles. I thought they were thrusters at first, but no, I think they're meant to store the handles. Like here. It's a pretty plain handle though, it's just mostly just round surfaces, no grip or anything on the on the handle, no texture. That's a tight fit. Alright, uh, the antennae, it's got orange here to tie in with those intakes, I guess. Let's see, good fit. And then we have some nice translucent pink. saber effects here. The, I gotta say the peg is quite short though. I do question how easily that might get knocked out. But they're nice. They're like a round profile. Yeah, very cool. I 
like the translucency of them. I'm just a little confused, like, I mean, even though I saw the cartoon, I, I don't know if the thing had four beam sabers. I mean, it's literally holding two, and then it's got two more handles. So, I don't know. I didn't read that fandom page. I do usually don't read those pages. I don't have time. All right, well, let us move on here. Oh, another thing. You should probably keep the stand with the figure because uh, these stands aren't all the same. Sometimes the peg is here, here. Sometimes the peg is actually bigger. This one looks like a normal size one. I like to label those anyways. All right, next up is uh, the second most iconic one from Gundam Seed. It's the Aegis Gundam. This is the one for the antagonist, Athrun Zala. And so this one's quite interesting. Uh, it transforms a little bit in the show itself. Uh, let's see what the blurb says here. So it can be a mobile armor, and then also it has a mobile armor attack mode where it spreads its claws and like blows. It's got a central gun and uh, destroys them. So that's uh, interesting. And here's some images. So here, here it is in its mobile armor flight mode. It's like a big arrowhead. And then it opens up his claws, and there's a big cannon right here, and it grabs a robots and just destroys them at close range. It's kind of like an octopus, really. And then and there it is in normal mode. Okay, now this is from Pound 21, the next wave. And it says 10th anniversary, number 249, chassis number 2021. And these are the robots from that particular wave. Okay and some basic stats. Twenty twenty one gum, still pretty bad. It's got some nastiness to it. Hmm, there's actually two bags here. Gotta be careful not to cut the antennae. These antennae are pretty uh, thin, might be, a, a, and small. I'm gonna crazy glue them in place later on. All right, let's start with the uh, body here. It's uh, almost a pink in, in my photo booth. Here's some red scissors, right? So I guess it is. It is pink, and if you look at the images there, I guess it's not really red either. It's magenta. <clears throat> okay, well, the bottom of the feet, decent details there. Really small grooves in this. And then we have some gunmetal running around the these uh, shins. Nice little vent details, I guess, or thruster details. No color in the back of the knee. This is flexible, this thing, PVC. Alright, I think the thrusters go here. We have a pretty dark blue up at the top of the torso, a little yellow there. And this is all gunmetal here, same with the neck. Okay. Let's go into the head here. Does it have translucent eyes? Hmm, they don't look transparent. But they are. Yeah, there's some green plastic with some silver backing. Not much molds of detail that I could see though. Uh, pink chin is sticking out pretty nice. Alright. Uh, not much detail back there. So then the antennae, they have some blue metallic in for the optic systems or whatever those are. That's a pretty short pin by the way, so again, uh, I would recommend you glue this stuff. See, that's so short it doesn't even want to stay right now. There's something missing from this thing. Is it this? Yeah, I guess it is. But I think it actually goes forward. That's a lot tighter of a fit. And see, that has, has this metallic blue. So this thing has to kind of snug in there. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I'll remember that in the uh, cartoon series. How that shape is the way it is. Okay. Let's move on. So a little left and right is capable. But uh, not too much because it collides with the shoulders there. 
So we have the uh, left arm, and the hand is a separate piece, painted gunmetal, more of that gunmetal here, and in the elbow, there's a peg hole there, and then it's got blue like the foot, but this is just molded in. Oh, actually, I think I have to put these on the side. So this has that blue and the pink and a hole, of course, uh, on both sides. I'm just looking now at this image here. I almost feel like the blue is supposed to be on the outside. I really don't remember this. The, in the cartoon, you know, the, the robots are moving so fast usually in battle. I never really paid too much attention to the actual design of it. Hmm. Let's just double check the box. Yeah, it looks like the blue is on the outside of these things. It's quite interesting that it's, they're so far back. But the back of them have nice bent details and thrusters and stuff. All right. So now we have a backpack, or I'm not sure, some sort of antennae. And this is flexible, so you don't have to worry about breaking those tips off. And there's a T-shape in it, rectangle. T-shape goes up top. Well, that's interesting. It's such a... It fits snugly right there. It's like seamless almost, but here it's just kind of spaced off. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice all the greebly effects there. So the arms kind of trap this wing in place also, so that's kind of nice. This side of the hand actually has an opening so you can wield the weapon. And the weapon is gunmetal, and it's got two barrels or gas barrel system or something like that. It's quite interesting. I've never seen that gun before. In the converge lineup that is. So now I'm noticing yeah these shoulders are canted so close to the uh, helmet as well. So I don't know if you're gonna get left and right now with the shoulders on. Not much. It does collide. And you'll notice the gun is going to have to be at a certain angle if you want it to actually stand on the ground. And so now we have a shield. This side has no peg hole, so I guess this shield must go on this, this left arm. Pretty nice details, molded and painted. Right, the yellow, some sort of X circle there, and then a whole lot of detail on the back. It's very good. Now, what is the deal with all these things? Where do they even go? These aren't round holes. They're like certain shapes. Am I crazy? I didn't even see these shapes anywhere. Let's go back to that box again. Oh, some go on the front of the feet. Okay. Yeah, that's really wacky. So this one, I think, goes on the front of the foot. Uh, to see if there's a left or right. I don't think so. These are really small parts. Now that is, I think, uh, going to run the risk of breaking if you, well, even if it fell off a shelf, I have a hard time thinking it would fall on the tip of that. It would fall somewhere else on the body. Yeah, I think it would be better to put these on first, but I didn't know. Okay. So now the next question is, where do these other two go? Oh, I think they must go in here. So there's... So that's the back position, or maybe you can do this, or what this. Sadly that box, you know, it doesn't show the rear view ever, so you don't even see these other antennae. I see kind of one there, it looks like it's pointed downwards. Alright, so one can only assume it has to go like this if it's pointed downwards. Hmm. I don't feel
feel like that's fitting in well. Let me try the other one. That one seems to be a better fit. All right. Yeah, maybe this will left and right. 50-50 chance. You won't waste too much time. Okay, so there it is, in all of its white-bladed glory. It's uh, a lot more complex than I imagined it was going to be. You can see, now this stand, I think that peg is bigger than the last one. Uh, I could be wrong again, but let's get the last one set up. So the last one today is number 262, as we saw earlier. It's called Buster Gundam GATX103. Now this is the next consecutive wave, number 20, pound 22. Okay, and so what robots were in that wave? And there you go. Oh cool, we got some callouts here. We can switch some stuff around. Okay, so a fandom here. So again, same shoe. Diarca is, is the pilot. And this one is a long range, like backup support robot. It has a firepower battle rivaling a battleship and long range weapons, it seems. Okay, so yeah, time to read that. Here's some images. I like the uh, rocket pods it has. Alright, let's get this bag. And those look like the rocket pods, actually. See, that peg looks small again. Let's break the paint apart here. This gun actually looks pretty good. I'm going to save that chew on that later. Now, this is interesting. This might be the first Converge figure I have that has two peg holes in the bottom of it. Maybe because it's some sort of weight issue. Alright, uh, well, going to the back. We got some gunmetal in the back. Pretty plain back of the legs. The side, eh, not the greatest either. Some orange here. The front, I guess, is the best view. It's got these, like, lines on the knee pads. And then uh, a bunch of nooks and crannies. Two circular things. Not sure what they are, though. And then what looks like a frame running from the hip to the backpack. And this backpack has some thruster details. It's a bunch of pegs. The neck is gunmetal color as well. And the green is nice. A little gunmetal here in the front. And this is the cockpit. And that's like this burnt orange color. It's not red. It's a really dark orange, it seems. All right. Uh, looking at this arm, this says A. This says B. Oh, so you can actually swap out the upper arms, it seems. Let's just do the stock one first. So the... Both hands have a round hole, to, so they can both wield weapons, which is nice. Seems like the norm is only the, the right hand holds the weapon, so it's nice to see both hands. Okay, so now those have pegs. Uh, the head. Let's see if there's translucency in the eyes. Hmm, need the flashlight again. The eyes are so small in these things. Yeah, they are green, though, so... But really, they just look black because they're in shadow. I like the orange coming across here. They look like armor plates or something. The green visor is nice. Eh, plain back of the head, but... This color is interesting. It's like an off-white... tan? Or it almost has a light peach, peach color to it, but it could be my photo booth. Alright, so these are really thin and rigid, I think, so be careful. Those could snap off. So right now, the head can move a little bit left and right, but not too much. But a little is better than nothing. So now we got those, rock, those pods. I'm guessing this is the rear. 
front here. Goes right around there. So that's nice. It's interesting that they chose to make them separate pieces, but maybe it has to do with these upper upper arms. Yeah, I guess you can swap them over. Now what's going on here? So this cannon thing, it's got a big barrel opening, which is nice. Uh, the green and gunmetal are nice. It's got around two round handles, and then a peg hole here. And I don't know if that's a peg hole there or a barrel. Maybe this is a bazooka, you know, because it's got it's open on both ends. I really don't know. Let's look at this one. I wonder if they join together. This one, I'm sure it's, this is the tip, I'm assuming. Looks like a beam rifle. Peg hole, two handles again. So, if you wanted to, you can have it wield both weapons. Let's see. But the weapons are so long. But yeah, look at that. It is doable. Yep, it's going to fall forward. So what's weird is, you know, the feet have two holes, but why wouldn't they make a stand with two pegs? I guess one. I guess it's all right. So now let's see some alternatives. So you can probably, yeah, store this gun on the back. I'm going to put the handles to the rear. So I'll flip-flop these. Yeah, so that's nice. You can store both weapons on its back. But then, yeah, it looks kind of looks kind of plain without. Oh, and also it's colliding right now. See, I can't move that arm down because the rifle's in the way. So you kind of have to move the the arm first before you slap the weapon on. Okay. Alright, so that's interesting for storage mode. Now let's try to figure out what's going on with these alternate arms. So I'm going to take that out. Nope. Yep. Pop in D. I see, it's basically just moving the arms sideways more. Maybe to fit those guns better. I gotta say, this is very loose. Like, so loose, I question. You probably want us to put some poster putty in there. So let's try this one now. Oh, let's see. Huh. It's, it can't go there. Maybe if I hold it backwards now. I wonder if it's supposed to hold that side. Mm, I don't know make sense to me but let's swap this one out you notice it's actually labeled R for right so that's good I guess if you rotate the hand, then yes, it's kind of just holding them off to the side now, more like gangster style shooting. Alright, so it's nice to have those options. Although this one, maybe this one should be on the other side because you see all this hollowness, you know, where they saved plastic. Yeah, I think this this is also hollowed out quite a bit, so I feel like you want to have this rifle looking thing on this side to kind of hide a lot of that. And the bazooka. Yeah, on this side. Alright. But now you can see the stuff on the top view, so hmm, hard to say. Now one thing I want to try 
is hold one weapon with both hands. Let's see if that's possible. I think it is, if you switch back to the other hands, maybe. I mean the other biceps. So the left and the right have different size pegs. So that also is another way to make it idiot proof. Me, I just throw in whatever and it's a 50-50 chance, so. Moving that sideways. think that hand's gonna reach. Or will it? Well, I gotta try it. Hold on. So it can, actually, with some stretching, it can hold a, a weapon with both hands. So that's unique. That this is the first converse figure I have that can do that. I know there are other ones that can do it, but it's the first time I've actually done it myself. On so, all right. So many different playability options here. It's I think probably the best of the three, just because of all the options. Uh, this dual one is probably the worst. It doesn't even make sense that it has four handles. This one doesn't really have many options. It's got a lot of parts, but. All right, let me uh, get the stand out. Well, the last thing is you can combine those two weapons either way with the blaster up front or the bazooka thing up front. So, let's do so. Yeah, the back of this will go into here. It's quite a loose fit though. Uh, let's see about the other way. I don't know if it's supposed to go like that or if it's supposed to go like this. No, well, I'm not sure. Maybe it's supposed to go in this. Uh, no. Yeah, I guess so. They're they're all kind of loose, so you can display it. I don't know which way I want to display it. I guess this way. Well, the hand's already on this one, so. So. That seems a little bit weird. <laughs> it's so... It's so long. Right? It's uh, kind of strange, but... That is probably why there's a handle here. Yes. As I slowly uh, figure things out. Now to explain the handle there. Okay. That looks a little more normal, I suppose. If you, I, I guess you could grip it there too and have a lot in the back, but I kind of feel like this is the most logical way right here. All right, let me get the stand out now. So I think I'm gonna display it like that. So although I didn't really like Gundam Seed, it was just I kind of like Gundam ZZ better. ZZ is a lot older, but it actually had a lot of funny. Uh, s script writing. Whereas, uh, again, Gun of Seed is just a straight up drama. It's uh, with giant robots. But the animation is much newer. Yeah, so, again, if you want to watch it, it's free on YouTube right now on uh, Gundam Info. So, thanks for watching. There's many other robots from Gun of Seed that I will re review in the future as well. So, uh, hang tight. Thanks for watching today. See you tomorrow.